So we are back with another Throne and Liberty video and today guys we check out and discuss update 1.6.0 and brand new massive events are coming to the game. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm still giving away 1000 Lucent every few days. To win it's as simple as this, drop a like on this video, leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subbed. Good luck everybody. Okay, so they tweeted out late, late last night about maintenance. That's going to last around uh, two hours. It's normally five hours, but two hours, which will introduce the update of 1.6.0 to the game. The maintenance is now over. The update should be ready for you to install on your, your current platform, Xbox, PC, or PlayStation. And today, guys, we're going to discuss the smaller details in regards to the update, but furthermore, the events coming to the game. So let's go. Throne and Liberty Update 1.6.0. They state Throne and Liberty Update 1.6.0 downtime will begin at 10:30 PT, which is 5:30 uh, AM UTC on November 6th, and last approximately two hours. It includes stability and back-end service improvements. They then say to check out the Haunted Harvest Community Showcase, uh, plus a preview of what to expect in the first tax delivery and castle siege events. They then state we've also compiled some of your most impressive achievements since launch. So on screen now guys you can see the Haunted Harvest Community Showcase. You can check that out if you want to pause the video or be my guest they say thanks to everyone that participated in the haunted harvest community showcase look forward to future showcases and contests on the throne and liberty discord then give you a few more details on the throne and liberty discord server if you want to pause the video again be my guest Okay, so moving on to the first month in Silesium. We're happy to share some notable stats since the start of your journey and can't wait to see what you'll accomplish next. So you can see on the screen now, guys, the first month in Silesium. 103 million total hours played. That is quite a hefty number. Most enemies killed here, we have the wolves of 111 million. Then we have the obsidian knights at 95 million and the goblin strong arms at 94 million. 916 million total quests completed. You know what? Considering the amount of players playing the game, I probably would have thought that would have been a little bit higher, but it's still a massive number nonetheless. 153 million total contracts completed. I would like to say that I've actually um, done my fair share of contracts, that's for damn sure. Okay, so the deadly bosses, i.e. players' deaths to these bosses. First up, we have the Malachi, over 3 million deaths. Then we have Morakai, over 3 million deaths. And then we have Talus, over 1.2 million deaths. We also have 937,000 level 50 players. Now that's wild to me. I mean, how many millions of players are playing this game? There's not even a million players yet that are level 50. Yeah, that is wild. 56 million total PvP kills. Jeez, I mean, I absolutely can't stand PvP in this game. I just think it's so unbalanced. But hey, I mean, I probably say a good thousand of them pvp kills is probably me alone because i just get absolutely slaughtered by those stuns i just can't deal with it okay so we're going to move on guys to the first of two events that are upcoming so first up, guys we have the tax delivery event so they state now that all first defenders have been selected the reigning guild may schedule the tax delivery event for their server Reigning Guilds may deliver a tax delivery between 2pm and 1am local server time. To check when the tax delivery event is scheduled, open up your map and then check the timetable under daily. Pretty cool guys. So as I said, there's an actual event added into the game in the tax delivery event. This is actually scheduled by the defenders. Pretty cool if you ask me. So tax delivery is a major guild event where the reigning guild must protect a caravan of taxes acquired from their territory. If the reigning guild successfully transports their spoils from Vienta village to Stoneguard castle, they receive a generous bounty of Lucent and Solent. However, if an attacking player Throughout that delivery, the rewards will instead be distributed to every participant outside of the first defender's 
alliance. So it's more or less, guys, the reigning guild versus everybody else. It's going to be very, very cool indeed, if you ask me. Okay, so each tax delivery begins with the reigning guild selecting a member to become the tax delivery golem. Capitalize on powerful abilities as a titan cargo to fend off seemingly endless onslaught of players that will stop at nothing for a piece of the prize. Communication and coordination between the reigning guild can make or break a delivery. So that's pretty cool guys, the reigning guild will select a member of their team to turn into a giant golem who everyone else has to take down, that's going to be the priority to take down this big old boy. So attacking guilds must destroy the titan cargo ceiling stone, fortunately they have the ability to contend with the might of the titan cargo through barriers bomb barriers, archer knights and the fearsome debuffs of the chaos golem. How will you prepare to stop or secure the tax delivery? So that sounds really really cool in my opinion. Opinion. So we have another event guys called the Castle Siege event. The first Castle Siege event will commence on November 17th which is more or less 10 days away from as I make this video. So as the siege begins, guilds have 45 minutes to achieve victory. Attackers must storm the castle, breach its fortified gates and capture the throne room. Defenders are transported inside the castle at the start, they must hold off their ground leveraging every resource at their disposal to repel the invaders. If the throne is contested when the timer runs out, the siege enters a tense 3 minute overtime where the battle's outcome hangs in the balance. Strategic locations like siege ruins play a crucial role. Capturing these ruins not only provides teleportation and resurrection points but also allows attacking guilds to summon powerful siege golems. Each golem, whether it's uh, the stone crusher, the battle carrier, the gate hammer or the jump attacker brings unique abilities to the battlefield from devastating castle walls to transporting players over them. Pretty badass people. Attackers must navigate the castle's intricate layout using environmental elements like the sewage system for surprise ambushes or operating gate levers to control access points. The pillage stones and resurrection stones scattered throughout the battlefield add another level of strategy, offering opportunities to steal resources and reinforce their position. While most skills will focus on taking power in the throne room, these five pillage stones can be captured by any attackers to snatch Solent and loosened from the castle vault, even if the reigning guild maintains control. No matter the strategy, all tactics will converge at the throne. There can only be one champion of Stoneguard Castle. Form alliances to rule together or betray your way to the top. They end with, we look forward to watching server storylines develop across these events. Thanks for your support, we'll see you in Silesium. Okay, so that sounds pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. Unfortunately for me, my guild's still relatively small because I've been away over the past two weeks. Haven't really had time to recruit this, that and the other. But hey, I can still watch this spectacle unfold on my server, that is for sure. But are you going to be taking part in these, uh, these new events? Let me know down below. But that's what we have guys for update 1.6.0. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, it really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.